Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to a very special end of the year episode. In this one, we will take a look and remember the craziest, the funniest, and the most unbelievable touring stories from your favorite metal musicians. Among others, we will remember how Devil Driver almost killed themselves trying to get to a show. Just driving the bus, and he goes, <laughs> we're gonna make it. We're going to make uh, Dark Tranquility forgot their manager in a country who couldn't get out of there for a couple of weeks after that. So after the show, we yeah, we were super excited, got incredibly drunk, of course. Um, and my personal favorite one, including Nick Holmes of Paradise Lost and uh, Can't Fish. It's fucking lethal, I'm honest. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube and join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, or any other social media you actually hang out at to submit your questions for all future interview guests. Uh, be the first ones to find out what's inside rock and metal releases and for more exclusive rock and metal content. And we are currently voting on the best rock and metal album of 2020. So make sure to head to our Instagram and Facebook pages, submit your vote, and have a chance of winning a pretty cool Christmas gift from us. Here you go. You're in Kiev now, right? Uh, yeah, I'm in Kiev. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, I don't know, like for some reason I remember uh, one of the first, not first, but maybe maybe 10 years ago we okay. were in Kiev. Yeah. Um, it was the first time we had our current tour manager mm -hmm. and front of house uh, sound guy. Uh, one of the best guys in the world. And I remember just like, it was one of those like super cold winters. It was just like, you know, ton of snow everywhere. <laughs> yeah. The show was insane and crazy. Um, but we've heard like from the promoter that, you know, some of the shows were, have been canceled in Russia. There was, you know, some turmoil, I don't know what it was, but it was kind of like, it's kind of sketchy. And we were so happy that we got out of Russia and the last show was <laughs> in <is>. Kiev <laughs> and we were kind of going home afterwards and we were like, okay, we did it, you know, because there, there, there've been visa issues, all that kind of stuff like that sometimes happens. Um, so, so after the show, we yeah, we were super excited. Got incredibly drunk, of course, a um, bunch of friends of ours. And then the next morning, and this was in December, like late December, yeah. um, like 20th of December or something like that. And uh, we woke up and we went to the airport and everything was screwed up and all the flights were delayed because of the weather, like this super snowstorm. And, uh, and the promoter guy, he was like, oh, well, I, there's a kind of like a special restaurant area that we can go to that nobody kind of knows. All right, we went there, got incredibly drunk again. And for some reason, like we forgot our tour manager. <laughs> and like we, we just left him. We, we didn't like tell him he missed our, his flight. He, he missed his Christmas Eve oh my uh, God, uh, celebration with his family oh <laughs> because God. of it. He had to wait another week to get out of here <laughs> just because we yeah we didn't tell him yeah so that's how our relationship started he's still with us and we love him but yeah that's so that's what happens sometimes like in you know um, especially in unsure uh, circumstances like that where shows are you don't really know if it's going to happen but then it does and it kind of turns into something awesome and then uh, yeah then you celebrate and you lose something yeah. <laughs> hell there's so much which one do i pick now <laughs> something oh, that you can possibly legally share <laughs> well yeah maybe maybe the one that went, my, my, i mean we were living in this, this rv in in a u.s store in what was it 90 or something and uh he had to go and take a dump on the toilet but you could not because it was broken and then you break the the bottom of that rv it's like a recreation vehicle so you cannot <laughs> take a shit in there and i know he was bloody and i know he was bloody complaining like i need to take a dump but then all of we, and Graham goes, he was driving like, no, no way, you know, we're driving now and I can't stop. And I, by the way, it's here in America. It will take one or two hours before we see, because we were driving in the desert yeah, yeah. in Arizona, I think. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden he stopped, stopped complaining. But then, <laughs> but then, but then all of a sudden there was this smell like entering the, the, the vehicle. Oh, fuck. <laughs> So we were like, you took a dump, didn't you, you bastard? And now you broke the toilet and it's flushing all <laughs> under this fucking vehicle. 
you you can't. I didn't go. I didn't go. Yes, you did. And then because we were driving in the desert, the stuff was drying in like one hour. So what <laughs> happened? The whole tour, we had the smell of a sewage system oh, in this fuck. in this thing. Oh, so sometimes crap. people came like, can we do an interview with you? And can we maybe, you know, in a quiet place, your RV? Sure. So <laughs> yeah. I come with you. And they go, oh, my God. I said, we do the interview and we live in this damn thing for two months, right? <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> this yeah, is a great uh, story, man. <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, and Mameli always denies that, but he bloody did. Bastard. <laughs> yeah! Well, there was this, in 2004, this is a good one. This is only the second half of the story because the first half of the story is so long, but we were heading to OzFest in LA mm -hmm. and it was going to be our first time playing OzFest in LA. Yeah. You know, and the first time Devil Driver was on OzFest. It was my first US tour with the band. Mm -hmm. um, and we were running really late and it was, it was the biggest show of the whole tour. And I wake up and I, you know, we're, we're just flying down the highway, probably doing 80, 85 miles per hour in a tour bus with a trailer behind us. And I see, I wake up and I see our bus driver laid out in the front lounge on the couch sleeping. <laughs> so you can imagine what went through my head. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? And then I go up there, I just see our tour manager, Eddie, just driving the bus and he goes, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And I'm like, do you know how to drive a bus? He's like, yeah, I got a commercial license. Like, okay, I'm glad. And we were, we were already going to miss our time slot, but the crew at OzFest really wanted to work with us. So we got there. Our trailer was on fire because of the axles had uh, or the bearings had burned out wow so they were just smoking and people were like your trailer looks like it's on fire we're like we know we don't care just let us through <laughs> and they're leaving us through and um uh there was a band on Ozfest that year called throwdown uh -huh. and um they were set up to go next so they let us use their gear and we played three songs and that was it wow <laughs> and there's a whole backstory to this. We our bus had broken down. We went through, I think, four different buses on that tour, <laughs> and um, we missed the Ozfest in San Francisco. Oh, really? Yeah, that and sucks. so we had already missed one show, and we're like, dude, we can't miss LA. That's like our hometown show. Yeah, exactly. Um, most of them involved, involved illegal stuff back in the day, you know, illegal drugs. Um, we once took acid on a bus, a tour bus journey that involved a ferry going to Germany. And we decided that on acid, it would be a really good idea if we shaved off all our eyebrows <laughs> and, and super glued toy furry caterpillars <laughs> onto our eyebrows. Whole band and the whole crew did this, which was genius at the time until we all woke up the next morning with these like and we couldn't, and we couldn't get we had to like you know yeah we'll leave it there needless to say when we arrived at the venue the next day the record company our money's weren't, weren't very impressed and the whole band turned up with no eyebrows and it's a glitter and furry caterpillar stuff like that. Well. Oh, shit, man. do you have any yeah. pictures of that thankfully before the internet thank, thank you <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we 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 played with most bands. I mean, most bands that you see on 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 bills, we probably played with them in some, you know, on the same stage as them on the same day or the day after. You know, we've kind of been in the vicinity of. Um, I think the funniest story was probably we once uh, played with a band called Misery Loves Company, a Swedish band, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think they're not going now, but um, but they were nice guys and we really got on with them, but. It was a time when bands used to do the end of the end of the tour pranks. You know, they would play a, a joke on the band, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't really see it that much now. But it was a time when everyone used to do the end of the tour prank. You know, uh, and and the bass player from the band, he uh, we when we when we played on stage at that time, we had some very large fans. You know, blowing air, uh, blowing the smoke onto the stage. You know, like yeah. big fans, 
And uh, this, the, the bass player from the band, whose name escapes me, uh, he he had a tin of this Swedish fish called surströmming. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's it's like rotten fish in a tin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can you can Google it, check it out. Uh, there's people, there's videos of people opening this stuff. But uh, he 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 poured the the surströming onto the one of the fans, uh, and the oil went onto the fan, and then it blew the smell of the fish. And the fish is it's the worst <laughs> smell you've ever ever had. And, and and I also I don't eat fish. I'm a, I'm a massive. I hate anything from the sea. I, will, I, I, can, I can never touch the fish or anything that's that's lived in the sea. How do you so, live in the United Kingdom then? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, I never, eat, I mean, none of my family eat it. I just don't. But I mean, even if you did eat fish, there's no way you could stand that smell. It is the worst. But anyway, blew on stage the smell, and I started to to, to vomit, uh, <laughs> literally, uh, then projectile vomit, like literally. Uh, I was holding my hand in my mouth, and I was coming through my hand to vomit because I couldn't oh stop God. it. And so, so then we played like for 50, I think we did 15 minutes and then we had to cancel the show because I couldn't even open my mouth without vomiting. Oh my God. Um, and my stomach was hurting from, there was nothing left, you know? Oh so, <laughs> so, then, so yeah, so, so then, the, but apparently this concert, it was, uh, it was a venue in Brussels in Belgium. And apparently the venue, they said even a year later, it smelled like the docks, even for a year. Oh. The whole place smelled like Docklands. Oh my God! Uh, and and the, the you know the guys had to work there, the roadie guys, they, the, the the crew, they had to work there, and they had to smell this fish every day for like. Oh crap! Uh, so yeah, so no, but yeah, you check out some some YouTube clips of people with this stuff because it is, it's fucking lethal, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it's kind of I mean at the time of course it was horrendous, you know, <laughs> but now you know we can laugh That's about it now. <laughs> <laughs> For the craziest story is uh, when uh, we were uh, playing the first U.S. Uh, tour with Celtic Frost in '86. Mm-hmm. We played in San Diego, and the security people were a gang, and um, they beat up everybody in the crowd. <laughs> and once they beat up everybody in the crowd, they they looked on stage. Oh, there are bands <laughs> on stage, and they started to be to beat up everybody in the band. It was just mayhem. What? Seriously? Yeah. This is unbelievable. Oh my god. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, this is usually like uh, really hard to come up with, like on the spot. But uh, now, when I'm actually talking to people in, in Ukraine, I will tell you a story about the first time we actually played in Ukraine. Oh, nice. That was that, that was a. Uh, I, it was really something because uh, we came, you know, a day early on mm-hmm. uh, to that to that gig. It was a festival. I don't remember the name, but it was in Kiev, a little bit outside the city. Yeah. And uh, the first day it went on like it should. You know, we went there to to see some bands. I think uh, Arch Enemy was playing, and yeah. we were hanging around. And um, so uh, everything was good. You know, we had nice hotels, and and you know, the day after we go back to. Uh, to the festival because it's our day we're going gonna go you know during day to check it out everything is going and when we're coming to the festival everybody is like they're tearing down the pa system already yet so we're like what well <laughs> all right uh, maybe they're just you know changing something or so uh the driver he threw us to our backstage and we sat down in the backstage uh opened up a beer and, and just sat around and we were starting to hear rumors that they, the fan festival is canceled. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, they were tearing down the PA and they tore down everything. And uh, then we heard that they didn't pay the PA company, you know, for, for the festival. So, uh, <laughs> but, so, uh, so we we were really disappointed, and we were stuck in the middle of nowhere, you know, outside <laughs> Kiev. And so, uh, well, luckily we. We got hold of some kind of driver that could come and pick us up. But first, we actually we had a, a interpreter with us, and we asked if there's somewhere we can go play uh, in in a club or something in the city <laughs> that would take us. So he said, "Yeah, he made made some calls, and we actually got you know a, a, a venue that was that was uh, actually willing to take us. And it was also the first time, or, or like 
in a long, long time that uh, Rotting Christ hadn't played over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they were really let down. So we asked them as well if they want to join and we did a <laughs> Finfold Rotten Sound Shit. evening over there in a, in a club. And it, it, was, it was so packed. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we wrote these big signs that we put up uh, all over the, the festival area you know, because there were people <laughs> still in there, fans there, and uh, that tell everyone that we're playing a club show. And it, uh, I think the capacity was like 300 for the show. And I think there were uh, over 600 tickets sold. So it was really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a cool evening and it was a really nice gig. It was full of people and it was, uh, well, it was great feeling, you know, that. But yeah, we, we, so we played, that's how we played the first time in. in There's a lot of crazy things. Blitz's 60th birthday was pretty crazy. Where do you go? What do you do? Where were you? Uh, we were in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh-huh. Uh, he was expecting the whole day that we were going to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I think his idea of what he thought we were going to do and what we did were two totally different. Because <laughs> I think in his mind, he's like, oh, they're probably going to get me like strippers or something. And we're like... <laughs> No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Dave and I went across the street to the Target. There was a Target that was like across the street from the venue. And Dave and I went across the street and we spent like 60 bucks like on all, you know, elderly things. <laughs> Fiber supplements, uh, you know, like Viagra pills, <laughs> uh, adult diapers, you know. <laughs> All this stuff, you know, like a shirt that said, like, number one grandpa on it. Like, all, just all this stuff that, you know, you don't want to get. We put it in this giant, like, pink happy birthday bag with all these balloons and stuff. And then we got him a walker. <laughs> we had to hide the walker. So we, so we hid the walker and all these balloons inside the, the ticket office to the, to the venue. So we didn't see it the whole night. So... After the show, we were trying to figure out how we were going to do it because our tour manager had a cake and all that. And he's like, all right, well, how do you want to do this? Because we want to, we want to make sure that we can get the crew involved too and not just do the thing. And then those guys are tearing down and like, oh, you missed it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, so our TM goes, well, let's just do this. He goes, go down because it was a club. It was a club where, where we had a situation where usually I'm a dressing room guy. Um, and some guys in the band are bus guys. I'm a dressing room guy. Dee Dee and Blitz sometimes go right to the bus. Derek sometimes goes right to the bus. I always go back to the dressing room. Normally because I just have just too much shit, you know, to carry in. I got four bags or whatnot. <laughs> so I do just make my way back to the dressing room. But normally I don't go back there like right as soon as I'm done. Like my normal protocol usually is to get off the stage have a little bit little drink just check in with my tech make sure he's cool we had a good show good night all right tear down i'll see you afterwards we'll have a drink and then i go chat with dave a little bit because he's taken down his in-ears rig so we usually you know have a five to ten minute chat about the show joking about whatever or you know just see that or this that and the other thing but this night, our tour manager's like, just go down to the dressing room as soon as we're done, and we'll just get everybody down there, and then we'll bring the cake and all that. So, and it turns out that the bus guys can't be bus guys for this show because the dressing room is behind the stage, and now you have 800 people that are in the front that you literally would have to walk through to get out the door of the bu- building to get to the bus because the bus is in front of the building and not in the back. So they were forced to go to the dressing room. So Blitz goes down there as soon as we get done, and I come down right afterwards. And he was like, hey. And I'm like, hey. He goes, everything cool? I go, yeah. Why? He goes, you're normally not down here this, this quick. I go, ah, not, not really much to go over with Animal tonight. So he's already on to something. He already knows that. This is not the usual protocol Routine, yeah. that happens after the show. So one by one, everybody starts trickling down. Now the crew comes down too, and he's like, what the fuck's going on over here? He's like, why are all you guys here? Then all of a sudden the TM comes in with a cake and brought all the, you know, <laughs> brought the presents and stuff, and he's like, all right. He goes, what's next? We're like, oh, that's right, we do have one more thing. Because like I said, he's thinking that we're gonna get the strippers. strippers and then stuff, we bring yeah. the walker in. <laughs> so, 
that was pretty fun. So we I, kept everybody down there, had like a little 15 minute party, and then we're back on the bus after. So like maybe like a half an hour later, like the crowd's cleared out, we signed autographs and stuff out in the front. So now we're back on the bus and it's literally just the band. <laughs> And we're all in the front lounge, and I have a videotape. I have a videotape. I have a video of this on my phone because it was so hysterical. As a video of the five of us sitting in the front lounge of the bus, not one of us even has a drink in their hand. We're just like sitting there, like a glass of water or soda or something. <laughs> and I go, and I just, I'm just filming around the bus, and I get the, my camera to blitz, and he goes, Happy birthday to me. I'm waiting for strippers and booze, and we got an empty bus, and nobody's even drinking. <laughs> Yeah, I well, actually you know can what? imagine him saying that. I, I, I think I can see it. <laughs> it was hysterical. It was just so funny. It wasn't that, it's something that we planned. I just I just happened to look up and I was just like, oh my God, this is hysterical. Just like, you know, <laughs> Dee Dee's on his phone. Derek's looking at something. <laughs> Dave's just, you know, off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> Alright guys, so these were my personal favorite ones from this year, but there are many, many more which you should definitely check out on the channel. Thank you all for this amazing year. Next one is going to be even better one. Keep rocking!